Good morning, everybody. My name is Jana Richens. I'm currently the Director of Maternity Services at the Whittington Trust in London. Uh, my PhD looked at fear of childbirth. This is an area that's really important to me and I work clinically supporting women at University College London Hospital for the past five years, um, looking at fear of birth. So today I'm going to introduce you and I'm going to co-present with a colleague, uh, Rosha. Uh, Rosha was a medical student who's conducted an evaluation of my clinic. So firstly, I would like to outline to you what is fear of birth. Currently, there's no real definition of what fear of birth is. So what we have, and you can see from this slide, the definitions include fear of birth, childbirth fear, fear of childbirth, childbirth related fear, and when you look at the literature throughout the world, there's no consistent definition in that literature. What is the extent of the problem? And, you know, we're seeing this around the world. We're seeing inconsistencies in the prevalence and the incidence of childbirth fear and fear of birth. In Nordic countries, it's estimated between 10 and 20% of women have fear of birth. Five to eight percent of these women have severe or disabling fear. You know, this is the type of fear where they really don't feel that they can um, cope with this pregnancy. In Australia and the UK, it's higher. It ranges from 26 percent to 30 percent. And there's some really fantastic studies that highlight uh, this, this, this problem. So why did I become interested in this um, topic? What really interested me was the numbers of women that I was uh, meeting clinically every day. And these, this group of women started to request more um, elective cesarean sections for their first birth. And, and what I was seeing was around 3% of the women um, at University College Hospital were actually requesting um, a cesarean section. What I found was there was three main types of women that requested this um, elective cesarean. There was those women that were very clear that they wanted a cesarean section and they had no fears at all. Their reasons would be that this is my only baby that I'm going to have. They were generally older women. They might be in early 40s, late 30s, um, 40 years old. They would say, I'm only going to have one baby. I've decided I want a cesarean section. I'm not scared of childbirth, but I want to be in control. Secondly, we see women who have had a very traumatic birth previously. Um, it would be a woman that may have had a major postpartum hemorrhage or um, um, a third or fourth degree tear um, or an emergency section and they felt very out of control. They felt their experience was really very traumatic and they could not um, go through a normal birth. Finally, there's these prima gravida, um, so first time mums, who are very fearful and very anxious. Uh, and it was the unknown, really, which predisposed to their anxieties and fears. What we're starting to see, the population of women in, in London and in um, higher income countries, is they might be the only child. They don't have siblings. They've never been exposed or um, been in contact with somebody that's had a baby a close, in a close relationship. And so they were really very fearful. And it's this group that might benefit from this one-to-one -one care. So my clinic was really supporting 
and looking at this group of women and exploring their anxieties and fears. Then, so Rosie will now tell you how this clinic works and the impact on women attending a specialized clinic for women that have fears and anxieties. Over to you, Rosie, and thank you. Hello, my name is Rosie Dudley. I'm a fifth year medical student at University College London, and I'm presenting the effect of midwife consultations on fear of birth in pregnant women through my service evaluation of the fear of birth clinic at University College London Hospital. Jana has already gone into some detail about the definitions of fear of birth, but it's important to note that what some women perceive as a traumatic birth may not actually carry a poor obstetric outcome. For some women, fear of changes from their birth plan, instrumental deliveries or emergency C-sections can represent a loss of control, which can only be averted by opting for an elective section from the outset. Fear of birth is a key topic to address from a UK perspective, as there are no specific recommendations or treatment plans. Often, being referred to the perinatal mental health team is the only option, and women are given few alternatives to help resolve or improve their fear. Treating fear of birth is important, as its impact extends throughout and beyond the antenatal period, in the form of postnatal depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and impaired attachment with the infant. The Fear of Birth Clinic describes its role as helping first-time mums and those who have already given birth overcome their fears. Women are usually referred from routine antenatal appointments following a request for an elective section due to vaginal birth. The clinic is staffed by a single consultant midwife with special interest and expertise in fear of birth. During an appointment, she will discuss the pros and cons of elective sections versus vaginal birth, answer any questions and correct any misconceptions women have, and attempt to elicit the reasons behind women's fears. To give you an idea of the concerns expressed by these women, I've paraphrased some quotes selected from the notes I kept while I observed the clinic. As you can see, Various themes emerge, including fears of injury to the baby, future incontinence as a result of vaginal delivery, and the experiences of their family and friends. Some women were even worried that their own body would injure the baby during birth. Ultimately though, women were concerned about control and the preserved ability to make their own decisions. In my service evaluation, I designed a questionnaire which measured fear of birth both before and after an appointment with the consultant midwife. For this, I used a validated tool called the Fear of Birth Scale. To target the secondary aims of my evaluation, I also included questions which allowed women to rate the staff, utility of service, skill of the consultant midwife, and preference for continuity of care. All these questions followed a visual analog scale format. Women rated their opinions and feelings on a 100 millimeter line, these are measured and given a score from zero to 100. Before I move on from the results of the service evaluation, I would like to highlight some points from my demographic review of women attending the clinic. Of the women presenting with a primary fear of birth, 11% disclosed a history of sexual abuse. Also, women with fear of birth were more likely to have a history of termination or of pregnancy, miscarriage, or a diagnosed mental health condition than the general UK female population. In addition, 26% of women with a mental health condition suffered from two or more comorbid mental illnesses. The results from the service evaluation were very positive. Women reported a statistically significant decrease in fear of birth following their appointments. Before the appointment, 79% of women reported a score over 60, indicating a clinically relevant level of fear. This approximately halved following the appointment. Satisfaction with the clinic and preference for continuity of care were both high. However, response to the continuity of care question carried the greatest standard deviation, indicating that this result was the least coherent. I would also like to touch on the clinic's impact on women's chosen method of birth. 
Although the focus of the clinic is to reduce fear, not to persuade women to have a vaginal birth, roughly one third of women did go ahead with a vaginal delivery. This is significant considering that virtually all women attending the clinic initially expressed a strong preference for elective C-section. Reduction in potentially unnecessary C-sections is beneficial from a clinical perspective, considering the links between birth method, development of the baby gut mi microbiome and future risk of allergies. Also from a fiscal standpoint, the reduction in cost over a 12 week period to the hospital was about 16,000 pounds. However, we live in a very different world now and the transition to remote models of consultation has been a challenge for everyone. To address this, I've drawn some data from a literature review I carried out in 2019 of antenatal interventions for women with fear of birth. Of the 10 interventions carried out across 32 different studies, there were two main methods of remote treatment, midwife-led psychoeducation and counselling via telephone and online cognitive behavioural therapy. In the telephone counselling intervention, women had two one hour long appointments at 24 and 34 weeks, while the control group had standard antenatal care. Midwives discussed women's expectations and feelings while providing a framework for women to work through their anticipation of the distressing elements of childbirth. It was found that the post-test fear of birth in these women was significantly lower than those receiving standard care alone. And in, additionally, for every five women included in the intervention, one C-section was averted at the cost of about 80 pounds per C-section. Online CBT is also being trialed as part of the UCARE pregnancy trial. Fear of birth decreased significantly in the intervention group. This was determined by researchers, however, to be primarily due to the effect of time and regression to the mean rather than the ICBT itself. Notably, this is a Swedish study, a country with a long history of treating fear of birth well during antenatal care. Women not allocated to the ICBT group were receiving face-to-face -face counselling and many women expressed that this is what they would have preferred. Although research in this area is limited, the uncertain future of in-person healthcare means it's vital to optimise care for women with fear of birth creatively and resourcefully. The results of the telephone counselling study are encouraging and now we have an opportunity to explore this in our own patient populations. In conclusion, my evaluation found that midwife consultations are both necessary and effective in reducing fear of birth in pregnant women. These findings extend even to women whose fear reaches a clinically significant degree. As there's a current deficit in UK-based research, further studies are needed to establish whether these results are replicable in other contexts across the UK. In addition, we need to establish potential for remote midwife consultations as a viable option in the future. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.